The Philippines is my family's home country. It is made up of roughly 7,641 islands and is located south of Taiwan and north of Borneo in Southeast Asia. Various combinations of indigenous tribes, including Austronesian and Negrito peoples, inhabited the islands for thousands of years. In the 1500s, upon the arrival of a Spanish expedition led by Ferdinand Magellan, the colonization of the Philippines under Spanish rule began and would extend for 300 years. Around this time, the country was originally named Las Islas Filipinas, in honor of King Philip II of Spain. After the end of the Spanish-American War in 1898, the Philippines was handed over to America despite a valiant attempt by rebels to gain independence, during which 200,000 Filipino civilians died. The U.S. Army retaliated by gathering peasants into what they called reconcentration camps and classifying large areas as battle zones. In response to rebels trying to free the Philippines, United States Senator Albert Beveridge from Indiana called Filipinos a barbarous race. And he went on to say, The Philippines are ours forever. We will not repudiate our duty in the archipelago. We will not abandon our duty in the Orient. We will not renounce our part in the mission of our race as the trustee under God of the civilization of the world. So why did the U.S. want to colonize the Philippines? As part of an agenda to become a global, imperial, and economic force, the United States political leaders colonized the Philippines largely because of its strategic location in the Pacific Ocean and Southeast Asia. In 1946, the Philippines finally gained independence from U.S. colonial rule and remains free to this day. However, the U.S. armed forces maintained its presence and supported brutal rule in the country, such as the dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos. After a combined total of almost 400 years being colonized by Spain and America, much of the damage had already been done. Colonial powers had introduced central government control, forced residents to pay taxes to the monarchy, converted the majority of the local population into Catholicism, extracted resources, including exporting crops to Spain for nothing in return, carried out abuses and enforced hard labor. Now, the Philippines of the present day is considered to be a third world country. Here are some important questions to ponder. Tagalog, the main language used throughout the country, heavily incorporates the Spanish language in much of its sounds and idioms. What would the Filipino mother tongue have sounded like without this influence? The Philippines is the only predominantly Catholic country in all of Asia. If indigenous tribes had been left to freely practice the spiritual traditions they held for thousands of years, what would that look like? and feel like today. Traditional Filipino clothing, dances, music, customs, and celebrations largely mirror those found in Spanish culture. How different would Filipino culture be today without colonial control? The majority of family names in the Philippines, like Mendoza, Perez, and Ramos, for example, are of Spanish descent. What would the family names of Filipinos have sounded like without the Spanish takeover? A colonial mentality, which includes feelings of inferiority and a disdain for darker brown skin, thrives among many Filipinos and Filipino Americans to this day. When will the systemic oppression that was caused by colonialism end? I cannot find 
any easy answers for all of these complicated questions. The only thing I can think of to say is what I would say in Tagalog. Hindi natin malalaman kahit kailan. We will never know. We will never know the beauty, richness, and depth of all that we have lost in the continuing aftermath of colonialism. We will never know.